Hello. So hello and welcome to our BNW webinar week. week. I hope you're all in good heels in these turbulent times. The theme of this webinar is what's new in AFX. I would like to introduce us briefly. Our speaker and presenter is Samuel Brandner. Besides Stefan Bachschuster, he is our expert for questions about advanced framework extension. My name is Oliver Grebner and I'm moderating this webinar. I'm mainly responsible for IFX at BMW. Two sentences on the procedure. This uh, webinar will be recorded. You will receive an email with a download link afterwards. We start with a short presentation about the news, followed by a live demo. During the webinar, you can ask question using the question function. Okay, with this, I hand over the floor to Mr. Brandner and wish you an informative presentation. Thanks, Oli, for the nice introduction. And um, yeah, I will like to show you some of the new features of AFX. Now we start right away. So um, one of the new features that we introduced with Creo 6 and AFX 6 is the verify project dialogue. So this dialogue will help to identify and resolve issues with the profile length calculation. So it is possible to define um, joins on uh, reused locations of profiles that will lead to different results. And uh, it's very hard to find those issues in a bigger assembly. So we decided to create a tool to help you find and resolve those issues. Uh, later on in the in the live demo section, I will also show you this. Then one uh, quick feature we introduced um, is the marking of these arrows where the profile starts. So this will make it easier for you to uh, reassemble existing profiles on a different curve and uh, maintaining the same orientation as the original beam. To illustrate this, I created a little video. So you can see I create a sketch from left to right and then from right to left and then assemble a beam on this. And you can see the top one points to the right and on the bottom one, it points to the left. So with this little enhancement, we make it very clear in which direction the beam is, is pointing. So you can always reuse the beams the right way. And the next big topic is uh, the new configuration options we introduced with um, AFX6 and also AFX7. So as you all know, AFX is uh, embedded in Creo, in the Creo main version, and also with the subscription license, you will have an AFX license. So many customers now have access to AFX, and this may, makes it very important um, that you can define a global configuration and also customize your library and uh, even use custom translations. And when you update your Creo main version, you don't want to lose all your settings. So we allow you to store this all on a network drive, for example, so you won't lose your changes after updating your Creo version. So this is uh, it for the uh, PowerPoint presentation, and I will now jump into the live demonstrations. <clears throat> so, here I have a little demo assembly. I already created some, some issues. So when you when you press generate, you can see um, I have some kind of endless loop here. And this is caused by multiple definitions of joints. So when I open the verify project dialog, you can see this is a tree representing all the beams that are assembled in the in the current assembly. And I can also filter the tree to only show the failed items. And as you can see, this beam here is assembled three times and uh, it has different joint definitions. So this is an attached surface joint. 
and it would lead to a calculation of minus 9.5 and uh, the actual value is minus 8.5 so what is causing this so if we zoom in on this area here you can see we have a little offset here between the plate and the beam and this is caused because there are two identical plates <clears throat> and the third plate is a bit thicker so this will cause an issue because this beam is reused three times so we can resolve this issue by just replacing the beams um, by a copy of itself quickly do that here all right and now when we go back we can regenerate and update the tree and you can see the issue is now resolved so there's one remaining still so um, you can see here this beam is also assembled three times and there are two two different joints um, defined so one is attached surface that would cause um, calculated value of 200 and this one is causing a calculated value of zero and this is also the actual zero uh, actual value and now i can uh, within the dialog i can okay i can say okay i want to delete this joint here and i delete it okay we generate the assembly update the tree and now all the issues are resolved so there are no more failed items here you can also see this uh, handy overview here total items reused items and failed items so this is now back to zero and if i close the dialog and regenerate one more time you can also see down here that the regeneration icon is gone so that's it for the verify project functionality um, just a quick reminder if you have any questions at any given time just feel free to ask them so the next one is the options dialog so this is regarding the global configuration <clears throat> As you can see right now, um, my config directory is set to uh, my documents folder. So this is the default behavior we um, implemented in Creo and in AFX, because usually when you install Creo or install uh, AFX standalone version, um, your, your setup directory will be in the program files folder. And as of Windows 10, it was introduced that you no longer have writing permissions in, inside of these folders. And if we just let it like this, you wouldn't be able to change any configuration option. So this makes a lot of sense if you are a single user, but for a multi-user environment, you of course want to put a general configuration um, in a network drive, for example, as I mentioned. So how do we achieve that? First of all, I need to close down Creo and go into my prepared folders. So um, right here, I have my starting location and I would just say, okay, I have a folder, I call it FX settings. And this folder will store all my configuration options from now on. So I go here into, this is where AFX is installed. Um, I copy the configuration and the customization folder, copy it over to here. And now if you go inside the configuration folder, you can see there is the AFX options XML file. So this is the one that is controlled with the dialog inside of Creo. And also one important file that you should always customize if you create an instance of your own configuration is the start model config file. So this file controls parameter names, feature names, views, material settings, and so on and so on. There's a very elaborate chapter in the, in the help center that will show you how you can uh, configure, it, con configure it this. One more step to get this all working is to go into your startup environment and set an, an environment variable. Um, this is called AFX user config path. And I've already set it up here to point exactly to the location I just created. I'll save it and now start my Creo again. Uh, 
uh, Sam, can this uh, variable also be set in system environment or only in startup script? Uh, you can also set it in the environment variables of your computer. Okay. Yeah. So I'll open it up again. <clears throat> And now you can see that the directory I'm I'm looking at is the configuration folder I just set up. So the next step to further customize your IFX installation is the possibility to define a customization path. You could also, also define a library path, but that would mean that you will copy all your parts from the default installation into your custom library path and no longer receive any updates if we fix errors with models or tab files inside of the default configuration. So we highly encourage you to just go ahead and try out the customization path option. So I will just set it up. I already copied it into the AFX settings folder. There you go. And okay. So now that this is stored, I can go ahead and customize my library to my choosing. So I'll just go ahead and go inside the folder. And the first thing that I want to do is probably have a custom relations file to give my parameter names like naming or outline or length, uh, a certain name that is the standard in my company. So I'll quickly go ahead and create a parts folder. And you can also copy the names from the original folder. So I need a folder profiles. Open that up. And now there is already param relations file present here. And I will just copy it over. So I will only change this one file. And <clears throat> if it's set correctly in the customization uh, folder, it will overwrite any other files that exist in the regular parts folder. So all changes applied in this folder will have higher priority. So I now edit this naming, I say naming two just for illustration and designation I will call it outline. Just you you can see what it actually does. So now when I go back to Creo, hit the options and OK. When I do this, the library is initialized new. So the changes should apply immediately. All right, go ahead, place this. And now when I open this parameters, uh, you can see here naming two, outline, and length. So these are the, the three parameters that would, uh, were created by changing this one file here. All right, so another thing that customers like to do is to limit the amount of tables you can select for a certain beam. So I'll just quickly do that. Create a steel beams millimeter folder here. And let's just go ahead and take this iBeam tab file. So I only need to customize this, so I only copy this. The only case where you need to copy multiple files is when you have, for example, a part file and a drawing file, then you would need to copy both of them. Or if it's an assembly, you also need to copy all the children of the assembly. They kind of exist um, one in the customization folder and one in the original folder. So you have to copy all related parts. Now I'll edit this one here as well. So let's say we only want to have uh, the Dean standard in here and don't care about British and African and whatever. So we can just remove them here. And let's, for example, also say for the IPE beam, we only have in our uh, company until um, 200. So we don't need the rest. Can just erase them as well. Save that file. Go back to Creo, update the library, and, ah, sorry. Uh, 
that was not so good. I have to reselect it. Yeah. So now I, when I reopen it, it will be reinitialized. And now I only have the, the Dean formats here present. And also for the IPE beam, it only goes to 200. This is the maximum. All right. So far for the profiles. Now I'll jump ahead and do some connectors as well. So we go back to our parts folder, create a folder, connectors. All right. And now for connectors, um, let's say in our company, we only need steel construction millimeter and Bosch. Uh, so we don't care about the rest. Um, then we can quickly create a cell list here. So selection list, so to speak. And then just add steel construction millimeter here for directory and Bosch. Save that file again. Go back to our folder, update it one more time. And now when I go back here, I only see steel construction millimeter and Bosch. Okay, so now we want to customize, for example, an end plate. So this end plate is, needs special requirements in our company, so we need to change it. And I go back to my folders, create a folder here. Uh, just copy and paste, easier. All right, then we also need no standard. All right. And now we want the end plate. So I'll just copy all the files this time. All right, copy, paste. Now I could change whatever I, I like. So uh, open the part file, change something in there, open the top file, change something in there, and it will all be taken from this directory. Now to illustrate this, I'll just quickly add some annotations here. Let's just say here custom. Custom and custom. All right, save it, close it, and go back to Creo. Read the library again, go to connector, steel construction. And now you can already see this now has the custom tag above it. And when I Assemble it. It also this one here, custom, and the settings image also has this custom. So like this, you can only uh, change one item, and the rest of the items will stay default as we deliver them. So if there are any updates from our side, any um, problems with some parts that we need to resolve, you will also receive the update and only the changed items are no longer in sync with our default library. Good. So the next thing I wanted to show is regarding Bosch connectors. So let's go back to connectors, create a folder Bosch. So let's say, for example, if I switch back here, um, in the Bosch library, these are all the standards. And in your company, you also have some elements you created on your own and you want to have them right here in a subfolder. This is also very nicely possible. You just create a new cell list. And this time it's extend. So extend means it will extend the cell list that uh, is in the original folder, uh, wrong one. So connectors, Bosch. So this cell list here will be extended by this one. And I will just create a new folder here, call it custom. And now when I go back to Creo and reinitialize the library, open this again, uh, did, I miss, did I save it? Ah, I didn't edit it. Yeah, sorry. 
we'll start there like this okay one more time then you will see we have the custom directory right here so now let's also place something in there <clears throat> And this is also a very common use case for many customers. So we take this connector here, copy it over to here. And now many customers, so these parts are not copied each time you assemble them like profiles or um, um, no standard um, connectors, but they they have a fixed name. So they have also a fixed name in, inside of Windshield. So, and for this example, I will just rename this um, to a windshield number that might be existing in your system. And now create a cell list also. And call it part because it's a part. And now when I go back here, update and select this, and you see you have the, the windshield number right here. This is not very intuitive for the people that are designing. If you have a lot, bunch of windshield something something in here. So there's also a way to get around this. Uh, for this, uh, I need to, yeah. Uh, Sam, uh, the file, the part file, uh, if it's, it's located in windshield, then of course it must must not be in the library, correct? Yeah. There's yeah. only for example. Yeah, okay. Then it will be automatically loaded from Wintrill, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. thanks. Um, okay, so for this, I, I, I want to customize this text here. And for this, I need to close down Creo and restart. And then I'll just go ahead and go back to my customization folder. And as you can see, there's also a text folder. So we are right now in English language, so we have to go here and there is a AFX custom text file. I will open this and you can see right here. Um, so it has a, a message ID. So this is my windshield number. And then there is an English string and a localized string. So if you want to give this file out to a localization office, then you can put in here the English string and tell them, okay, I need this in German, in French, in Italian, and so on. And they can just localize it for you. But in this case, we only have the English. So we're gonna call this quick connector. And this is H8 type A. Oh, type, okay. Duplicate the line, save it, and then restart our Creo application. All right. So, and now when we go back here, in our custom folder, can now see that it says, okay, quick connector 88 type A. So this is a much more meaningful name. And uh, when I assemble it right here, it will of course have the name windchill, blah, blah, blah. But this is a very good way to customize the look and feel of your library. <clears throat> Now, some can, could mention that they also want this for, for their other library parts that are used out of the default. So this is also possible, but you have to make sure to use the right name because some of them, the names are already localized from our side to make them translated from German to English because initially we created the library parts in German. So they are actually translated to English. And in this case, you need to figure out the correct name of the element. And if you go in here, you can see that it's called SV88A. So I'll copy this and also update this here. It's the same element, so we can give it the same name. Quick connector, quick connector, 
save this one more time, then restart the application one more time. Wait for Creo to launch. And then when we open it again, go back to our library. Then you can see also this name has been localized differently. So like this, you can also adapt all the namings of your, of your library parts. All right, I think that concludes my presentation. Do I have anything else? Let me check. Uh, no, that looks good. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Are there any questions? Um, yes, we have one question. Um, you did in the profile um, dialog says from which version is this available? This uh, overview dialog? Um, the verify project dialog, yes. you mean? Yeah, it's yes. available since Creo 6, so AFX 6. Okay, and uh, you have uh, deleted uh, some sizes in this uh, prof in this one profile. Is it also possible to add my own sizes to this profiles? Um, yeah, sure. You can just um, adapt your your file to your own format. So if you if you have sizes that you want to add, you just need to um, put it in the same fashion as they are already existing. So you need a cell string. So this is the string that is displayed in the dialog. Then you have a parameter that will be set. It's called BNW size. And it's also a string parameter. And then you have a bunch of double parameters. And uh, this way you can just add your own instances. OK, thanks. And uh, one more question. You copied the full um, directory of this configuration uh, folder. Yeah. But for the customization, you only copied some files. Uh, do we need the complete configuration folder? Yeah, the configuration folder needs to be copied completely. OK. As there are also other files inside that um, will be read from that location. So they all need to be in here. So there are also beam encode dims, drawing scale list, and stuff like that. So this also needs to be located in here. OK, thanks. So um, at the moment, I have no more questions. Mm -hmm. Then I think uh, we can go on. All right, so thanks for your attention. And uh, I give it back to you, Oli. OK. Thank you, Samuel, for the great uh, presentation. Um, I would like to recommend the other webinars, uh, which follow one follow today and some more the next two days. In the morning, uh, the lectures will be held in German, and in the afternoon, the English ones. Maybe there's still something interesting for you. Okay, um, then the, some information about contacts. You can, if you want, you can uh, draw your attention to the, to our, oh, sorry, <laughs> start again. I would like to draw your, our, your attention to our newsletter, which will keep you up to date with news about our products and events. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find numerous videos about our products and our team is always available to answer uh, your question. Okay, um, maybe we have one last question. We are, I think we have uh, some time, Sam. Okay. Okay, uh, can these updates also be easily integrated in Windchill is the question. I don't know if they if they mean the part or the changes of your customizations. This folder, I think the folder cannot be integrated in Windchill. No, the folder cannot be integrated. Yeah. Must be a okay, local but, storage. Yes. Yeah, but the parts, of course, can be uh, uploaded to Windchill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they can be uploaded. Yeah. 
all the parts that are not copied can be uploaded. Okay. So like the like the quick connector we used, this one can be uploaded to Windchill and then will also be assembled from Windchill if you use it from the library. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then, then I think we we come to an end. Thank you for your interest and attention. As already mentioned, you will receive an email with a recording of the webinar. This brings the webinar to an end and I wish you a pleasant day. Stay healthy. Goodbye. <laughs>